Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Johanna Miller of Vermont Natural Resources Council with our weekly climate dispatch, joined today by my colleague Lauren Hurl, Vermont Conservation Voters, as you know, and Representative Laura Sabelia, the Vice Chair of the House Energy and Technology Committee, um, joining us today as well to talk about some really good news that we are excited to put on your radar, um, which is a really important broadband bill. Um, was voted out unanimously from the House Energy and Technology Committee this week. Representative Sibelia will tell you more about that bill, but you might also recognize Representative Sibelia as a lead champion of the Global Warming Solutions Act, um, this new climate accountability framework that is operationalizing a focus on making climate progress um, in state government. Um, that work is now underway and Representative Sibelia was a lead champion of that in part because of not only the need to make climate progress, but in service of how that happens, like making sure that we are building more resilient, um, equitable, strong communities, including rural communities. And the broadband component of that actually is really important for many reasons. So it's really great news. We're so glad that um, you're joining us. Thank you so much for your time. We know how crazy busy you are, but if you don't mind hitting the highlights, it'd be really great to let folks know and um, really thank you again for your time. So what's in that and why does it matter? Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to come and talk a little bit about it today. Uh, the bill that we passed out on Wednesday, uh, 9 as you said, um, it's, it now has a number, it's uh, H360, and I'm kind of in love with the number um, when I think about the strategy that we are um, employing. So this bill uh, builds off of Act 79, which we passed in 2019, uh, <clears throat> which uh, essentially, uh, essentially was us saying, uh, local communities, uh, no one's coming to save you. Uh, we don't have the funds to uh, build to everyone, um, but we know that we have to. And so we're going to start supporting um, uh, this regionally. Uh, we're, we're asking you to come together um, in these communications union districts and start creating plans to get to the last mile with your neighbors. Um, and, you know, we put in place uh, this VITA loan fund, um, these planning funds and support a, a, a uh, a new position at the Department of Public Service to help these CUDs uh, get up and running. Uh, and what we have seen across Vermont, um, in, in rural Vermont, where folks are really desperate for this, we have over 300 Vermonters who stepped forward as part of a response to that. And during the pandemic um, to say, we, we volunteer, we're gonna form these CUDs we're going to figure out how to apply for these planning funds to work with our regional planning commissions uh, and other telecommunications experts to put together um, a plan to get to our neighbors with reliable high-speed internet um, access broadband. <clears throat> and they've been doing that. Um, you know, uh, we now have, oh gosh, I keep forgetting because it's changing. It's at least nine. Uh, communications union districts uh, in the state of Vermont. And I think it's all but 16 towns in the state are part of a, at least a study committee for a CUD. So uh, we see the strategy as <clears throat> having taken hold um, and folks really embracing the opportunity to, okay, fine, if it's up to us, we're going to dig in and we're going to do it. And we're going to make sure that we have access here. Um, and so this bill that we have this year, basically um, the chair of our committee, Chair uh, Tim Briglin has uh, called it 2.0, uh, Act 79 2.0, and it, and it really is. It's looking at, um, okay, we asked, them, we asked folks to do that. We told them, you know, this is kind of the reality of the situation, they've done it. Um, and so how do we take, uh, how do we take these folks um, and provide tools for them to get to the next level? And so, uh, this bill, um, we've heard from a number of CUDs that they've created these plans, and now it's about how do we bring together the financing to build these plans uh, and, the, and uh, you know, tech, additional technical expertise to support these communication union districts. Um, and so this, uh, this bill would create the Vermont, uh, <clears throat> oh gosh, look at that, it's gone CBA, uh, the Community Broadband Authority, there we go. Um, uh, 
And uh, the purpose of that entity would be to uh, help put together the financing and technical assistance needed to get these CUD plans built. Uh, and so uh, there are a number of one-time funds that have been identified by both the governor uh, and by the governor. Uh, we anticipate there may be additional federal funds that would come in, some additional um, CRF funds that remain uh, that can be employed in service of this. Um, and so in, in, a, in a nutshell, uh, that's what this bill does. It stands up this, uh, this authority and gives it uh, staffing and funds to help finance the plans that we asked these CUDs to build, to put together. So uh, really excited, <clears throat> um, thrilled to see uh, the response by Vermonters. And, and um, you know, a lot of names that we would, that, that many folks would recognize. I mean, and a lot of everyday Vermonters who have come forward with incredible talents to share in, in putting this together. And you know, it, in many ways, it reminds me of what we're starting to see with these subcommittees from the Global Warming Solutions Act. Again, something that I was really hopeful we would see with, uh, for instance, and especially the Rural Resiliency um, Subcommittee. You know, how do we um, engage our rural communities in in getting these uh, solutions uh, planned out and and inclusive of uh, our rural areas' needs? So. I guess I, I guess I'll kind of pause there for a moment. I don't know if that if you have questions or if there are other pieces you want to ask me about. No, that's it's really inspiring and exciting, and so and just great to see it moving forward unanimously and with such momentum. Um, so, does that head to the the House floor soon? Is, does it stop in other committees, or is yes. that going to be a floor vote? Great. Well, today it was uh, today it's making its way to the Ways and Means Committee. There is, uh, in addition to standing up the CBA, there are a number of different financial tools, including um, including some tax incentives uh, for fiber that is built um, to uh, to reach um, unserved and underserved Vermonters. And so the, the Ways and Means Committee will be looking at that, and then uh, the bill will make its way back up to uh, the Appropriations Committee, back up because we're all in the building still, even though we're not uh, so upstairs, right? We're the appropriations yep. committee. So <clears throat> make its way to the appropriations committee where they will kind of wrestle with the finer points of, you know, what are the one-time funds that are available? Do we have the right parameters on the buckets that we've identified? Uh, we have uh, within the CBA looking at some pre-construction grants uh, and then some subordinated debt um, to go with the veto loan funds. And uh, we think that that we think that that is the best way um, to ensure that we have a continuum um, of funding to get this built. We think that um, these CUDs are putting forward plans that will eventually be able to pay back that debt and with favorable terms and, and appropriate supports uh, that uh, putting putting a large amount of of debt on the table with favorable terms will be um, will be appropriate. So I'm. Um, the appropriations committee will be weighing in on that. We also have a workforce development piece there. So, you know, many aspects of Vermont, we see challenges around workforce. So no surprise, we see it here as well in terms of fiber splicers and installers and, and that sort of, uh, that sort of work. Well, that's, that's so great. And, you know, I just love these, these areas and appreciate the creativity that you and your committee and, you know, how to engage people and bring all of that expertise and passion that Vermonters have to, you know, make our communities as resilient and strong and, you know, in the 21st century. Um, so that is great. And we're so grateful for your leadership on that bill and that issue and the really important voice that you bring and that you brought to the Global Warming Solutions Act and will continue to bring as our climate action plan is developed. So thank you so much for all you've been doing um, as vice chair of the committee and um, the important voice you bring. And for all of you, uh, we like to end these with a call to action. And this week, you know, as we head into town meeting week, uh, for those of you who have town meeting coming up, whether that's casting your ballot uh, or showing up in some virtual space, or I know everyone, every town's doing it in their own ways, um, but make sure you make your voice heard, cast your vote uh, if it's happening this week. Um, 
and hopefully with the legislature on break, we can all take a deep breath, get some sunshine, some fresh air, rejuvenate, and come back to continue this really important work that you all are doing. So thank you all and happy town meeting week, and we'll see you soon. Have a great weekend. Thank you.